Linux Mint and Manjaro are two Linux distros that couldn't be further apart from each other. While Mint is known for its superior stability and usability, Manjaro is known for its bleeding edge nature. While one offers undeniable solidity, the other offers unmatched versatility, and the differences go on and on. But at the same time, there are some similarities here as well. Now these might surprise you. Both Mint and Manjaro are extremely popular and have their respective die-hard followers. They both provide industry-leading software availability, they both are very easy to use and both provide enjoyable computing experiences. In fact, Linux Mint and Manjaro are two of the best Linux distros of all time. But the real question here is, how do they compare against each other? Which among them is the best? Which among them is more suitable for you? To answer this, I installed both Mint and Manjaro on the same machine and I've been using them both as my daily drivers, using the same set of software on both the distros. And what I found out was quite surprising. These two systems have a personality of their own and they are quite opposite in nature. You can use and love one, any one, but not both. So let's jump right in and take a deeper look at these two fantastic Linux distros and see which one comes out on top. One of these two might just as well end up being your next daily driver. Having a good knowledge of Linux commands and being comfortable using the terminal really broadens what you can do with Linux and what kind of experience you are going to get here. So if you are interested in leveling up your Linux game, definitely check out my course Linux Mastery Express, which is the fastest way to learn Linux and start using Linux like a pro. I'll teach you a set of commands that will give you the confidence to use Linux without even a graphical user interface. Then we'll dive deep and learn how to use the vEditor and master shell scripting with real life examples. After teaching more than 100 students in person, I've curated this course with the top things that will level up your Linux skills the fastest. So if you're feeling like your Linux game is stuck in the same spot for too long and you're ready to take your Linux skills to the next level quickly, check out the link in the description below and get your Linux Mastery Express. We are running a massive 45% discount right now, so make use of it. Starting off with the user interface, we start seeing big differences from the first look itself. And for many people, this section itself can be the deciding factor in choosing the one. Linux Mint is specially known for its Cinnamon desktop. Cinnamon is a sleek and modern desktop environment. What makes Cinnamon special is it's a really simple desktop. This desktop is familiar to everybody. Because of its familiarity to the windows styled workflow, everybody just gets this desktop. This is your menu, you open app settings and files from here and this panel houses your favorites and running apps. Then you get your quick controls here couldn't get simpler. At the same time, Cinnamon Desktop is fully feature packed. Just because this is simple doesn't mean there are any trade-offs. Cinnamon is on par with other major desktops like GNOME and KD Plasma when it comes to features. There are inbuilt themes, extensions, add-ons and all the bells and whistles are present here. But by default, you get this simple and clean setup that also looks super elegant. Cinnamon is also built using the newest tech and is actively developed and maintained. Mint also has XFC and Mate editions as well. These are lightweight options that aim to provide the same great Mint experience but with a boosted performance. Moving on to the Manjaro camp, this distro is available with all the desktop options. KDE Plasma, XFC, GNOME, Budgie, Cinnamon, Mate, i3 and Sway options are available for download. All these desktops are available in their newest versions and come in Manjaro colors. If your favorite color is green, boy, are you gonna love this or what? Manjaro makes all the desktops look good. Most of these ship with the dark theme and green accent colors. Of course, you can change these if you want. The advantage with Manjaro is that you get options. Whatever your UI preferences are, you can use Manjaro with that. Linux Mint on the other hand actually doesn't need these options because majority of Linux Mint users use it because they want to use Cinnamon. But yeah, Manjaro has this advantage and it cannot be denied. GNOME, which is the most popular Linux desktop, is available here, so many people are going to feel at home with Manjaro. At the same time, less popular but power options like Sway are available here. And there's everything that's in between. As I said, what kind of desktop UI a Linux distro provides can be a huge deciding factor in choosing a distro. At the same time, it's also a very personal thing. I like one, you might like the other. So in this department, I'll give both the distros a point each as I feel that Cinnamon Desktop is one of the biggest reasons for Linux Mint's popularity and any desktop that gets this kind of love deserves a point. And Manjaro gets a point because it gives you a vast array of options. It gives you choice. Software availability of a Linux distro has a huge role in whether the distro succeeds or fails. Mint and Manjaro are successful distros, obviously, but the software seen on both these distros couldn't be more different. 
Manjaro absolutely kills it in this department. It's an arch-based Linux distro and just like its parent, Manjaro 2 has industry-leading software availability. Manjaro's official repos contain a wide range of software, from day-to-day -day usage software like browsers and office suites to programming languages and tools, from entertainment and games to advanced system utilities. You're gonna get everything here. At the same time, all these packages are available here in very new versions. Now, Linux Mint 2 has large software availability, but the package versions are going to lag significantly behind compared to what Manjaro offers. In fact, this cutting-edge nature of Manjaro is one of the biggest reasons for its popularity. Then we have the Arch User Repositories or AUR here. Arch User Repositories are the largest collection of Linux software there is. This is even bigger than Debian repositories with more than 100,000 package builds. Using these, you can install literally any software created for Linux. On other distros, even Mint, you'll have to bring in third-party repositories for some software. But none of that stuff here on Manjaro. AUR gives you everything. You can see I'm able to find even niche stuff here as well. Arch user repositories simplify life. Linux Mint, on the other hand, is based on the LTS version of Ubuntu and fetches software directly from the Ubuntu software repositories. Now, Ubuntu is the world's most popular Linux distro and hence gets first-class support from all the software vendors. Most software vendors test and package their software for Ubuntu and the Ubuntu software repositories are huge as well. And because of this, you'll get anything you want here on Mint directly in the software store itself. The software manager is steaming with software across categories. While these package versions may not be as new as Manjaro, but they are definitely more tested and reliable. Mint strips Ubuntu snaps and brings in flat packs here. You can switch between packaging formats using this drop down. The combined software availability of flat packs and Ubuntu repositories means you are going to enjoy a top level software availability here. Manjaro will have the latest software which generally tend to contain the newest bug fixes and features. Mint tends to have slightly older versions which are more dependable. This is going to have all kinds of implications for the stability of these systems. But right now, both Mint and Manjaro get a pointage for their top tier software availability. Linux Mint and Manjaro have very different stability profiles. These are entirely different operating systems when it comes to the stability and they cater to very different use cases. These differences creep in right from their respective origins. Mint is based on Ubuntu, which is particularly known for its stability. Manjaro is based on Arch Linux, which is known for its bleeding edge nature. So you can expect Mint and Manjaro to be very different, downright opposite in this department. Manjaro aims to be on the bleeding edge of tech. So you get the newest software versions. And when a software gets updated by its developers, the update is tested and pushed to its users. So your Manjaro system is going to receive updates on a regular basis. Your system is going to have the newest versions of all the packages all the time. Mint, on the other hand, aims to be conservative. It gets packages from Ubuntu repositories, which focus more on providing a reliable experience than the newest of everything. You get very well-tested packages here that pretty much work fine all the time. Anything you install here is going to be dependable and reliable. Prioritizing this stability is going to be the better option for most people. But there are trade-offs here as well. Because of using more tested, dependable packages, the version numbers here might lag behind and you might miss out on new features and enhancements. On the other hand, Manjaro provides you new versions of software loaded with new features and all that shiny stuff. But because of comparatively less testing opportunities, these packages might be less stable and carry more bugs and stuff. You have to choose between what you want, stability or bleeding edge excitement. I feel that stability outweighs the other for most people. But yeah, if you're here for the new tech, new versions and want to be on the bleeding edge side of things, go for Manjaro. And if you're a Linux intermediate or advanced user, this system is going to be really enjoyable for you. Manjaro also uses Arch Linux as its testing grounds and pushes updates after they are confirmed to be working fully fine on Arch. So even when these packages are new, Manjaro brings in a level of stability to the experience. Having said that, Mint is more stable than Manjaro and it's going to be the better option for most people, even people who are new to Linux. Talking about usability, Mint and Manjaro both are easy to get started with, easy to get around and generally great for most use cases. Linux Mint maintains a simplicity in everything. The desktop, software installation, everything here is as simple as it can get. This makes Linux Mint great when you want to get some work done and carry on with your life and need the system to stay out of your way. Mint does this amazingly. 
Manjaro simply provides more options, more freedom in how you want to set it up and use the system. So when there are a lot of options, it's absolutely natural for it to feel complex. But still, for an Arch-based Linux distro, Manjaro really simplifies things and it actually gives us the Arch experience in a more palatable way. But ultimately, it's Linux Mint that wins this round. Stability and usability of Linux Mint are really best in the business. But I want to admit that this comparison may not be absolutely fair. We are comparing apples and oranges here. Passing judgment on Manjaro based on the stability is like judging a tractor based on how fast it can do 0 to 60. A tractor is just not built for that, right? Both Linux Mint and Manjaro are very optimized and deliver phenomenal performance out of the box. Linux Mint Cinnamon Desktop is very efficient with resources. Now it's not as lightweight as something like XFC and at the same time, it doesn't give you an oldish experience like XFC as well. No, Cinnamon is a modern desktop built using new technologies and it also has all the modern features that are expected from a 2024 desktop system. It's just on the lighter side of resource usage when compared to something like GNOME. And even all the default applications here like the Nemo File Manager, the Software Center are optimized for a balance of efficiency and feature richness with a leaning towards performance. Mint's kernel is thrown by the Ubuntu team for a balanced performance across a range of hardware. On Mint, really no complaints in this department. Manjaro as a cutting edge distro gets the latest Linux kernels, newest drivers, libraries and desktops. Now these newer packages are generally very optimized and bring in the latest performance tweaks. They also bring support for newer hardware like CPUs and GPUs as well. So you can expect top rate performance here. And if you're particularly after high performance, both Mint and Manjaro come with XFC desktop. Both these distros are fast and fantastic in the XFC version. And these systems are great for old and slow computers as well. All in all, performance on both Mint and Manjaro is top quality and there's nothing left to be needed. So they both get a point each in this department. Gaming on Linux in general has evolved significantly. Because of Proton, Linux has become a viable alternative for Windows when it comes to gaming. In fact, gaming was one reason which stopped many people from completely switching to Linux. Now that has changed. Firstly, on both Mint and Manjaro, you get a wide range of games directly from their respective software stores. You can open the software store and browse the endless gaming sections here. There are many hidden gems here, titles like Zero AD, Nexus, Alien Arena, Super Tux Card, Hedge Wars and many more can be fun loaded. But if you want something more AAA, then Steam is what I recommend. Steam has completely revolutionized gaming on Linux. With Steam, you not only get access to a vast library of Linux native games, but you can play many Windows exclusive games directly like they are Linux native. Now this is absolutely mind blowing. Steam's Steam Play feature lets you install Windows games on Linux and play them directly here. All the Proton installation and configuration is handled by Steam itself. It blows my mind every time I install a Windows game. I mean, look at how flawlessly it all works here. Top titles like GTA 5, Cyberpunk 2077, Elden Ring, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt and many more install and run great on Linux. You can get Steam from the software stores on both Mint and Manjaro. This was one last reason to hold on to Windows for many people, and it's gone now. Long live Linux. Both Mint and Manjaro get a pointage for gaming here. Mint uses the same simple installer that Ubuntu has, and installing and getting started with it is a very simple affair. Download the ISO file from the official website, flash it onto a USB stick, a live boot into it, and start the installer. The Ubiquiti installer lets you choose your language, location, the partition to install Mint and other details and gets you set up in 15-20 minutes. Then on the first boot, Mint itself takes you through a simple setup procedure where it lets you install drivers, personalize the desktop and do other important things like setting up backup and that's that. Your Mint system is good to go. Manjaro 2 has a fairly simple installation. It gives you the Calamaris installer which is slightly more comprehensive when compared to Mint's installer but it is simple nonetheless. You follow the instructions and do the same things like selecting your language, choosing the partition to install Manjaro and stuff and it downloads the latest packages from the internet and installs a fresh Manjaro on your system. Both Mint and Manjaro have straightforward installation procedures and even people who are new to Linux can install and get started with them. Of course, if you get stuck somewhere, you can use installation guide videos on YouTube. Both get a point each year. Linux Mint and Manjaro are very different kinds of operating systems. But one thing that they both have in common is, they both are extremely good at what they're supposed to do. Mint provides a fantastic computing platform that's simple, elegant and just a pleasure to use. 
This system feels so natural when you use it. There's no friction when you're using Mint. This system fits in perfectly when you want to use it for literally anything. Software development, gaming rig for students, businesses, and even for daily usage. Mint can be whatever you want and no matter what you use it for, there are no trade-offs with Mint. Manjaro is a tech enthusiast's dream system. You get the latest of everything, you live on the cutting edge with Manjaro and at the same time, it's fairly easy to use. With built-in GUS for everything, you don't need a lot of technical know-how to use it. I have used Manjaro for a long time and when you're a tinkerer or a software developer, Manjaro brings many advantages. I loved it because installing third-party software like Flutter, IDEs and other stuff gets considerably more easy thanks to AUR. With AUR, what you can do with your system is limited by your imagination only. On other distros, getting third-party software working can be a hassle at times. Don't get me wrong, even AUR doesn't work 100% fine all the time, but it's a convenience nonetheless. But Mint provides stability. You don't have to have your fingers crossed every time you update the system. Manjaro can be a bit iffy when updates are concerned. So for me, the stability and dependability that Mint provides becomes vastly more attractive than the excitement of Manjaro because of my work. So my personal point today goes to Linux Mint. And by the total tally of points, Linux Mint wins this battle. But the thing to be noted here is, Mint and Manjaro are different. One is not better than the other necessarily. Mint is for people who want a stable and simple computing system and Manjaro is for people who want that excitement and a cutting edge experience. So you gotta choose what's best for you. The download links for both Mint and Manjaro are given in the description below. Alright, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and leave me a big thumbs up. And if you're interested in leveling up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero within the shortest amount of time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. Next up, check out the top 10 best lightweight Linux distros for hyper performance. It's got some really cool distros, so don't miss that. Alright, this is the next text, signing out.